Hi everyone, I am Gaurav from tweak.dev and in this video we are going to learn about how a page is rendered. We are going to find out what a browser does when it first sees your HTML document and steps that you can take to decrease the loading time of your page. So now let's try to understand how the browser renders a page. So what it does is it scans through all of these tags one by one. Okay, this process is known as parsing. Uh, the browser has a special functionality built into it known as the parser, which basically scans for these tags and uh, before a page is rendered, the browser actually tries to convert this HTML document into a format which is understood by it. And that is known as the document object model or the DOM. Okay, now the DOM has all the information about a particular tag and all of its properties, all of its rules are present inside the DOM, right? So it basically um, tries to construct a tree-like structure which has the relationship between all of the tags, right? So for example, this is the HTML tag. This is the parent. These two are the child tags, head and body, right? And then body again has these child tags. So it will try to create uh, something of this sort as you can see on the screen um, this is known as the DOM tree all right and these are the nodes of the DOM tree now the parcel builds this tree one by one it goes through these tags and adds a DOM node to the DOM tree so now let's view all of this information in the browser let me inspect this element. If you see over here, we see the DOM tree for this page. Okay. And it has these tags. You can in ignore this because this was added by an extension, a Chrome extension, which I am using. So these are the contents of the page as we see over here. If I click on this and if we head to the properties, you can see the DOM or the object associated with this node and if we expand this we can see all of the properties which we can access programmatically and uh, you can see some of the important properties over here such as ID, the inner text and the inner HTML. So DOM provides us an interface to interact with all of these properties. Now let's head over to the console and let's try and access these elements programmatically. So the way we can do that is we can make use of the document object. Okay. And then we can make use of get element by ID. Let's access this element. It has the ID one. Okay. And if we execute this command, it's giving us this element. Now suppose you want to modify the text for this element or if you just want to access the text. So first you'll say inner text. Okay. So it's giving us this text. Now if we want to modify this text, what we will do is just type over here paragraph one modified and you can see that this text has been modified. So by using the DOM, we can modify the contents of an element, we can access its properties, and we can also see the different elements which are available within it. Now, for example, let's go to this body tag and uh, let's view its children. So you will see all of these nodes so you can access the child elements within this by clicking on it now it will it's a, it has taken us to the paragraph with the id2 and so on you can even see the um 
So if we were to apply a class to this element, you would see that in the class list. And since it doesn't have any children, so the HTML collection for this is empty. It has nodes, which is a text node, which contains the information, right? So all of this is available through the DOM. Similarly, uh, we have another model known as the CSSOM, okay, which is the CSS object model. It basically has all the styling information associated with an element. If we head over to the styles property, we can see that this element has these style properties, okay. And similarly, even it provides us an interface to interact. So if I want to change the, uh, the styling for the second element, so what I will say is document dot get element by ID. It's the element with ID two. And I want to interact with the style property. Okay. So it gives us this object. Now, if you look at this, it has all of the different style properties associated with an element. So let's try and modify the background color. Let's give it a background color of yellow. As you can see, the background color of yellow has been applied to this element. So using the CSS OM, you can modify the styling information associated with an element. Well, there we have it, a brief intro about DOM and CSS OM. Now let's get back to how a page is rendered. So as you can see over here, the browser encounters these tags and it scans them and it creates the DOM and the CSS OM. But let's take a look at what happens when it comes across this script tag. So what it does is if it's a, if it's an external script, such as this one, it will first download that file. Okay. Uh, the execution will be paused until that file is downloaded. And then what it will do is it will execute that script and then the rest of the passing resumes. All right. So the script tag is parser blocking. What that basically means is the DOM parsing is paused till the time a script is executed. Let me show you what I mean. What we will do is we will move this script tag in between these two elements. Now let me refresh the browser as you can see since it is parser blocking it loaded this element first it took us a while to download the script and execute the script and then this element was rendered right let me refresh this again you can see element is loaded, then this happens, and then the second paragraph is rendered on the screen. So with this example, it is pretty clear that the script tag is parser blocking and it delays the rendering time or the loading time of a page. Okay. Uh, and we want to minimize that, especially uh, if you have a, uh, if you have a slow network or if the script is really large, it takes a lot of time to download. So what it will do is first it will download the script and then it will actually execute that script. Once the script execution is completed, then it will proceed to this tag. Then it will resume the passing and render this tag. So that's clearly evident with this example. Now why this is happening over here is because I have written the server in such a way that whenever this URL is requested, it takes around two seconds to give the response. Well, you might be wondering why in the first place is the script tag parser blocking. 
There are two main reasons behind it. The first one is that it can access the DOM and this may in turn affect the future DOM construction, right? Because it can modify it, it can update the values, it can delete an element, right? All of these things uh, affect the future DOM construction, okay? So that's why, uh, that's one reason. And the second reason is that it can also access the CSS object, CSSOM, right? And it can modify the styling information of an element. Another thing to keep in mind is that while the DOM is built incrementally, the uh, CSSOM doesn't work like that. It's pretty complex. The browser goes through all of these styles and it applies them. You know, one rule, one CSS rule might override the other one. And on top of that, we can modify the styling through the CSSOM programmatically, right? So considering all of this, the browser needs to have all the CSS related information beforehand. If the CSS OM isn't built at the time of script execution, it will wait for the CSS OM to be built completely. Now this includes the time it takes to download the CSS and build the CSS OM. So let's look at this with an example. What I have over here is that we have this slow.css which will basically underline the second paragraph and in app.js I have created an endpoint known as slow and it basically will respond with the with the CSS file after four seconds. All right. And what we will do now is we will add this to the to our HTML file. Okay, let me specify the path. Let me copy this and paste it here. And we will write over here slow because that's the name of the endpoint. Um, just notice in this area, okay, so what we saw over here is that even though this was responding, uh, this file was loading after four seconds and this had a delay of two seconds. Both of them eventually appeared right at the same point of time. That's because the script deferred its execution until the CSS OM was built. Okay, so we waited until the script was downloaded and then the CSS OM was constructed once that happened that's when the script was executed so from the knowledge that we have gathered so far it is quite evident that dom construction css construction and script execution they're all interdependent on each other unless and until the css om is constructed the script won't execute and the parsing won't continue unless and until the script has been executed. So these three are interdependent on each other. And the performance of a website depends heavily on the manner in which these three are loaded. So we need to balance all three of these and that is known as the critical rendering path. Now you have seen the problem. Now let's look at the possible ways of how you can fix this. So the first approach would be that we can move the script tag to the end of the page. So what you can see over here is that both the elements were rendered and once the script was downloaded and then it was executed. Well, this still doesn't solve the problem that the script isn't downloaded as soon as the parsing begins. So let me show you what I mean. Let's add a script tag over here. Let's make use of console.time. Okay, so we will log the time it takes for us to render this page. All right, so let's see, let's give it the name loading time. And let me copy this 
and let's add another one over here so this is an example of inline script let's just say time end okay so let's refresh this so if you see over here it's showing us the total loading time it is close to uh, two seconds right and like i said uh, earlier when the script was over here this was the loading time even after we moved it below right um, it's still taking us a large amount of time right there's not much of a difference now let's see if we can even solve this issue so th there's a very complex way of doing this it's really tough let me show you how you can do that uh, so you have to type something very difficult we have to write lots of code to do this uh, and it's this basically a sync and and I save this now now let's look at the loading time right is 0.4 whereas earlier we were at uh, close to two seconds right you can see the performance benefit straight away okay now let me place this script over here let's save this and let's see if it blocks the rendering and as you can see there is no change right so the way this works is this attribute allows the script downloading to start in parallel of the parsing and the moment the script is downloaded the execution happens the second way of doing this is with the help of defer. This attribute uh, ensures that the script will not execute unless and until the document has been passed. So what it does, it waits for the DOM content loaded event to occur. And once that happens, the script will be executed. So the difference between these two is that in case of async, the moment the script is downloaded, it will be executed. And in case of defer, the script will be executed only when the, uh, the document has been passed, but the DOM content loaded event has not been fired. Okay, so let's take a look at this. What we will do now is we will add an event listener. Okay, document dot add event listener dom content loaded and what we want to do is when this event happens we will just say um, we will just log uh, content loaded all right let's just see how the behavior of defer is the script is executed right before the DOM content loaded event is fired, right? So we can see that it prints main loaded and then it prints content loaded. All right, so this kind of guarantees that only once the document is parsed, then the script will be executed. Okay, because the order in which the script appears is important, right? So for example, let's make a modification to our main.js and what we will do now is change the color of the second paragraph. So we'll get the second element by ID, okay, which is two. And then we will change its style color to red, not read red. And let's save this. Okay, let me do a refresh. So as you can see, um, the script executed, then it changed the color and then the content was loaded. But now let's make a slight change to the behavior. Let's get rid of this defer. Okay, and let me save this. So as you can see right now, 
since this element wasn't loaded when it tried to modify the uh, color of this element basically it threw an exception right because till now this element has not been passed to overcome such issues we can make use of defer which guarantees that the document has been passed and then the script will be executed so the position of the script is important and with the help of defer it doesn't even matter where the uh, where the script tag is placed it is guaranteed that it will be executed once the document has been passed right so even though right now the script tag appears before this element still the intended behavior is happening whereas without this it fails let's undo this let's also understand the difference between async in this case let me put async over here let's save this and here you can see the intended behavior is happening but the content loaded event is happening before and the main loaded is happening afterwards this basically indicates that the asynchronous uh, attribute causes the script to be downloaded in the background but the moment it is available it's executed right so it might happen after the dom construction right uh, or the dom passing or it might happen even before the dom has been passed so these are the key differences between all of these different approaches and we can see the performance benefits of using async and defer now you might be wondering in which scenario to use async and in which scenario to use defer well uh, you use async in cases where uh, the execution of the script uh, the, the time at which the script is executed doesn't really matter so for example if you want to use the uh, analytics functionality uh, or some functionality which is not critical to your web page so in that scenario i would recommend using async for example uh, adding a google analytics tracker to your website uh, the script for that you can set that as async right because that's independent of the functionality of the website so whereas we will make use of defer when we want to do some kind of manipulation and we want to ensure that the document has been passed completely so these are the ways in which you can tweak up the performance of your website in case you have any doubts or queries or you want to leave any feedback do so in the comments and thanks for watching until we meet again